Hey guys, in this video we're talking about significant figures and rounding. This is something that you're going to um, use like in any chemistry course from now on that you take out um, and probably a lot of other courses too, science courses that is. So the idea is this, whenever you take a measurement um, there's some uncertainty associated with that measurement and the uncertainty is going to depend upon the instrument that you're using. Let's say we're using a, a centimeter stick, a ruler here. Um, the idea is that each of the marks are one centimeter apart. Now we know from before that we always report that result, that measurement, to one more place to the right. So if these marks are one centimeter apart, we would record this measurement to the tenth place, place a tenth of a centimeter or a millimeter. So let's say we were measuring this blue bar. Um, we know it's between 2 and 3, closer to 3 than 2, so it's more than 2.5, and so you might say 2.9 centimeters. If you said 2.8, I don't think anybody would argue with you. But the point is, there's um, one place past the decimal that we record. And anyone either, anybody that reads that number knows that the instrument that was used to take that measurement, the closest marks were in the ones place, one centimeter apart. Now, there's some uncertainty in this 0.9 centimeters. It's still a significant figure. We're going to see that in a minute. But there's some uncertainty associated with it. And we need to keep track of that uncertainty. In other words, we need to carry that information through whenever we manipulate this, this number, whenever that is, whenever we perform calculations with this number. So in order to, to do that, we need to know a few things. The first thing we have to do, know <clears throat> is how to look at a number and tell how many significant figures there are in that number number. Um, so these are the rules guys, the yellow, the white, and the blue. If it's anything that's not a zero, one through nine always count as a significant figure. A leading zero never counts. What is a leading zero? It's a number that's on the left side of the number. So for example, in this number down here, the first three zeros are all leading zeros and they do not count as significant figures. Um, and closed zeros always count as significant figures. So for example, these two zeros between the one and the two are enclosed, um, and they always count as significant figures. Now this last in the red, this is um, where people probably get confused most often. This is also a rule, um, an important one. It says that when you look at a number that came from a measurement, any trailing zeros count as significant figures if there's an explicit decimal point, if you can physically see the decimal point. But if you cannot see the decimal point, trailing zeros do not count. What are trailing zeros? They're zeros that are the, on the right-hand side of the number. For example, these two zeros right here in this number, um, these are trailing zeros, and they would count as significant figures because we can see the decimal point. In this number, these two zeros are also trailing zeros, but they would not count as significant figures because we cannot see the decimal point. Now, there's an implicit decimal point there, but it's not explicit. So in this number right here, um, we would count one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. In this one, one, two, three, four significant figures because remember the trailing zeros don't count. Okay, we're going to need to use that when we're applying these rules here. Um, some other things to know is that, are that, um, an exact number has, you think of it as having an infinite number of significant figures. It has more significant figures and more precision than any other number that you're going to deal with. Um, what's an exact number? Well, exact numbers come from two places. One, if you're counting discrete objects, if you're counting people, and the result is seven people, that number seven there, that's an exact number. There are exactly seven people because 7.1 people would be really gross. Um, <clears throat> or definition, one inch is equal to 12 feet. This is a definition, this one and this 12 are exact numbers. The next thing is that when we round, we're just, we're gonna, this is the rule that we are going to use. If the first insignificant figure, the first number that you're going to drop is five or larger, you round the last significant figure that you're gonna keep up by one. If the first insignificant figure, the first number you're going to drop is less than five, don't round up, just leave it as is. Okay, so <clears throat> there are two rules um, for rounding um, after an operation. Um, the first one is deals with addition and subtraction. So one rule deals with addition and subtraction, the other rule deals with multiplication and division. This is the addition and subtraction rule. 
And the, and the rule is this, round the answer to the same place, the same place as the last significant figure in the least precise number that's being added or subtracted is in. What does that mean? The least precise number, it's the one that's the, um, is the one whose last significant figure is the farthest to the left. So what do we mean by that? If this is, these are the places in the number, this is a decimal point, ones, tens, hundreds place, tenths, hundredths, thousands place, left is that way. So for example, this measurement here, 120 millimeters, um, the last significant figure is the two, right? <clears throat> um, and that's in the tens place, because remember the trailing zero doesn't count in the decimal point. In this measurement, 34 millimeters, um, the last significant figure is the four. And so the 120, because its last significant figure in the tens place is farther to the left, it's right here, then the last significant figure here, which is in the ones place, this is less precise. And we would, if we were adding or subtracting these numbers, we would round to this place. Now, what that tells us, okay, that's important, right? Because we know of looking at this number here, the 120 millimeters, that whoever measured this, the tool that they used, the closest marks were in the 100 millimeter place, 100 millimeters apart. In this instrument, they were in the 10, they were 10 millimeters apart. 10 millimeters is closer together than 100 millimeters is, right? And this is a more precise instrument, we say, than this is. And so this number is less precise, this number is more precise. So, so let's go look at that. So for example, if we're doing 120 millimeters minus 34 millimeters, um, your calculator tells you 86 millimeters, but because the, less the least precise of these two numbers has its last significant figure in the tens place, this two right here, we have to round our answer to the tens place. So 86 millimeters becomes 90 with no decimal point. Some notation here. Um, it's very useful to be able to write the first one or two insignificant figures to keep track of them, um, but to know that they are not significant figures. And so what we do is we use a subscript. So this 86, the six is a subscript showing that it is, a, that it is not a significant figure. Um, so this is five or bigger, we round the eight to a nine. Notice we have to keep the zero here um, to keep the size of the number the same. We can't just write nine, it has to be 90. Now, because we know the instrument that took this measurement, the closest marks were 100 millimeters apart, the, the person that made this measurement had to make an estimate, a guess, at, at the two. So there's uncertainty in here. So it wouldn't make sense to, to write down when we do the subtraction 86 millimeters because this zero could be a nine, it could be a one, might be an eight, we don't know. And that uncertainty is going to make this number, the, uh, this place, insignificant. It, so there's no useful information in there. Um, so also example, um, let's say we're adding 0.184 grams and 0 0.02 grams. When we add them up, your calculator says 0 0.204 grams. Um, the least precise of these two numbers would be the, be the 0 0.02 because the last significant figure, the 2, is 2 to the right of the decimal. Here, the last significant figure is a 4, 3 to the right of the decimal. This is a less precise number. That means this is um, the place, the, the hundredth place that we're going to round to. So 0 0.204 grams rounds to 0 0.20 grams. Now, the next rule, guys, is for multiplication and division. This is a different rule. Um, and the important thing is that you think about what operation you're performing and apply the appropriate rule. So this is the rule. You round the result of multiplication or division to the same number of significant figures as the number of significant figures um, in the, the, um, the number that has the least amount of significant figures. Um, so the way I remember it is addition and subtraction, we care about the place in multiplication and division, we care about how many, the number, the amount of significant figures. So for example, if we're taking 3.43 grams divided by 0 0.015 milliliters, um, our, my calculator says 228.6 grams per milliliter. Um, but we count significant figures. This is why we had to learn to count how many sig figs are in a number. In this top number, there are one, two, three significant figures. In the bottom, remember these are leading zero, so they do not count. There are one, two significant figures. So when we report this, the result of this division, we can only report it to two significant figures. So because the first, insi first insignificant figure is five or bigger, we round up, 
and we write 230 grams per milliliter. No decimal point, but we have to put the zero there to keep the size of the number the same. All right, and the last thing are mixed operations. Um, this is important. This is where people get um, mixed up at first quite a bit. So the important thing, you guys, when you have a mixed operation, what's a mixed operation? When you're doing more than one operation, addition and or subtraction, as well as multiplication or division all in the same set. Um, the important thing is to force yourself to write out each step. Write out. I don't mean just do it in your mind. Physically put it on paper. Write each step out, and at each step, keep track of significant figures where you would have rounded if that was the last step, but don't actually round into the end. So you're going to use our subscripts for that. So let's look at this operation here. Um, 2.341 meters minus 2.331 meters divided by 0.125 seconds plus 0 0.0163 meters per second. All right, so we're going to follow the order of operations, which says that we do our subtraction first. And we apply the rule for addition and subtraction, which is we look at what place the last sig fig is in. Here, the last sig fig is both three places past the decimal, so we keep three past the decimal. And notice this, guys. When we do that subtraction, your calculator is going to tell you 0 0.01. Calculators do not do sig figs. You have to do sig figs. So you have to put this zero here because we have to keep, we must have three places past the decimal because of the rule. So you put the zero there, um, and we have it at this point here. The next step, we do the division. 0 0.010 divided by 0.125 seconds. Um, now we count significant figures. We're using the rule for multiplication and division. We care about how many. Well, in this top number here, leading zeros don't count, trailing zero does. We have two significant figures. In the bottom, we have three. So in this division, we're allowed to keep two sig figs, which ends up being 0 0.080 and a zero. Um, now, the last step, guys, it's the addition. So we go back to the rule for addition and subtraction, which means we care about what place the last significant figure is in. In this first number, it's one, two, three past the decimal. In this one, it's one, two, three, four past the decimal. So we have to round our answer, and we do round because it's the last step, to three past the decimal. So when you do this addition, your calculator says 0 0.0963 is meters per second. So to three past the decimal, we round to 0 0.096 meters per second. And there you go.